All right, guys, doing Liberty or Death, uh, the American Insurrection. This is uh, designed by Harold Buchanan. This is volume five in the coin series. Um, so, you know, if you're a coin fan, um, well, you're going to know a lot more about these games than I do. Um, I've only other played one other coin game. That was the first one, Andy and Abyss. I don't own any other coin games. I just played one. Um, with some some friends and a long time ago the way it came out I want to say that's like you know eight nine years ago or whatever I don't know it's been a while uh, but anyway this is uh, volume five and this is about the American War of Independence or the American Revolutionary War or the American Insurrection uh, the coin system is about coin stands for counterinsurgency and this game says, hey, you know, the, this was a counterinsurgency situation with, and, and really in a, in a dual way in this game. The first way is that, you know, the Patriots are, are, are an insurgency and Britain's trying to, you know, uh, take them down. But the second way is that there's, a, the, there's four players in the game. One of the players is the Indians. They actually call them the Indians, not the Native Americans. They say they're Indians. And the Indians are actually an insurgency against, you know, the colonists. And so the colonists are trying to put them down. So it's kind of interesting in that regard. It's kind of a dual <laughs> counterinsurgency game, uh, which I like. Uh, beautiful map. You can see here. Uh, I think it is anyway. I mean, it's a lovely looking map. Um, it's divided into the colonies. Okay, so, you know, there's the colonies, but it's also divided equally important as the cities. Um, and you can see, like, you know, Boston and New York and, you know, Charleston, you know, all the cities. And so it takes the idea of, well, while, while the colony itself may be important, these population centers are equally important or sometimes more important because, well, that's where the people are, right? Um, so what do we have? We have the four factions. We got the, the British. We have the Patriots. And the British, by the way, have two colored uh, pieces. They have the red for the... Uh, they're British regulars, and they have the green for the traitors. I mean, the Tories, which are the you know, the loyalists, um, and you got the uh, Native Americans, the Indians. Uh, they're in the brown. Finally, you have the French. They they don't start on the board. They're not in the war, of course, yet, and they're they're uh, with the uh, the white uh, pieces. So um, anyway, I'm getting ready to do the deck setup. And there's two ways you can do the deck setup. I'm playing the full campaign. There's uh, three scenarios in the game. Uh, I'm going to do the whole shebang, the whole war. And you can either just take all these cards, mash them together, and deal out stacks of them. And, or you can divide them up into historical periods, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to make separate stacks of 10 each, which means that not all the cards are going to be in play, which I really like. I like the fact that you don't know, you're not going to know what events exactly are going to happen. Um, and and that's, that's a nice feature of the game. There's these winter quarter cards. There's eight of them. You're, we're going to use six of them. And those will be shuffled in um, basically, you're gonna take, you're gonna make stacks of ten cards. You're gonna take one of these, take the bottom four cards, shuffle one of these in with them, make one stack, and that's a year. And then you're gonna, you're gonna build years on on top for the whole war. So you're not quite sure when the winter quarters are gonna happen. Winter quarters are important because you're gonna, you're gonna determine well not only victory but your supply. Uh, you, you know, and all these other things. So, you know, you can't leave your armies, you know, hanging out, uh, you know, in, you know, North Carolina. Uh, you know, you're, you're going to suffer attrition and, and bad things if, if, especially as the British, if you leave them out there. Now, I haven't played this game in a year. I was going to read the rules. I still haven't read the rules. But I started doing the setup and kind of the rules are kind of coming back to me. And I'm just, and I'm, I remember how the gameplay kind of works. So 
you know, uh, I don't know if I'm even going to read the rules again. I may just start playing and and go from there. Um, questions I'm sure will come up. I'll, I'll jump into the rule book at that point. So uh, I'm going to make my deck uh, or make the deck for the game. And then I'll come back and I'll get started. Okay, so I've got my deck set up. Um, I've got things ready to go. So let's take a look real briefly at the... F there's f This is a four-player game that I'm playing. Um, it, it, you can play a solo game, and there's bots. I've put those away. I played actually a game with the bots, and yeah, it was all right. Um, but I'm going to play just a four-player game um, solo. Um, so the four factions are the Patriots, which are going to be these blue pieces. The British, which are going to be the red pieces, as well as their Tory al American allies, which are the green pieces. The Indians, which are the brown pieces. And the French, which are the white. Now, victory conditions are, you know, are what you know, drive a game, in essence, drive your play. So what are they trying to do? Well, um, there's really two sides that, uh, that share. So they share a victory condition. So the British and the Indians want to, sh they share basically a victory condition, which is the level of support among the colonies. They both want the colonies uh, to support the crown, support Britain. Um, and that is their shared victory goal. However, they have differing secondary goals, which are, are this, which is the Indians want to put these villages down. They don't start with any villages. They want to start laying villages down. Um, and that is their kind of showing their, um, you know, strength, their, their, they're putting strength into, you know, the, the area. Um, and they want to keep the Patriot player from putting their forts down or destroy their forts. Now, forts here are called forts, but they're really kind of positions of strength or of arsenals or, or of support or whatever. That's what they're uh, representing, okay, <laughs> for whatever that's worth. Um on the uh, flip side, the uh, Patriots and the French, they both want their opposition to be up. That means they want the, co the colonies to be supporting the rebellion. And they share that victory condition. Their individual goals or separate goals are that the Patriots, they want to have forts on the board and they don't want Indian villages. The, the French, they want to cost casualties. Um, and they want to cause more casualties to the British than the combined Patriot French casualties. Um, so those are the victory conditions, and that's what uh, the players are going to be aiming for. You know, uh, uh, at one end it may look like, well, they're they're working together, but kind of. I mean, they really aren't. I mean, they're they're four different players, and in essence, they want different things to happen, and we'll see how that plays out. Um, so the pieces, okay, the cubes um, represent your regular troops. So this is a British regular, this is a Tory regular. Um, again, down here, we got the French regulars and we got the Patriot, you know, regulars, Continentals, right? These uh, cylinders are for the Patriots, they're militia. They don't count for casualties, so they can have those killed and it doesn't count for anything. Um, the Indians have only have cylinders, and they're their war parties, and they don't count for casualties. Okay, now these cylinders can be if they're revealed, they're I think they're called active. If they're not, they're inactive. If they're inactive, they can't be hurt. If they're active, uh, they can be attacked and and destroyed. Uh, and, and these are going to be very important. Um, Really, in particular, for the Patriots. I mean, obviously, the Indians only have them, but you'll, you'll see how this works with the Patriots as we play. Um, 
they, you know, these are really key for, for how they play these militia, uh, which is kind of interesting, interesting take on the game. They're not necessarily powerful in combat, although they're not, you know, horrible, but, um, Anyway, they're, uh, they're key for, for getting support and opposition. Now, if we look at the map, um, you have two types of uh, representation on an area. One is control, and a site can con controls an area if they have the military dominance in the area. But separate from that is the support or opposition in an area, and that can, that's totally different from the control. So you can control an area, but another side may have that area in support of them. Um, so uh, <clears throat> what's, you know, what's important? Well, this is important. You know, the support opposition is the kind of key in terms of victory condition, conditions. But control is important as far as gaining resources in an area. And those that happens during the winter resource or winter uh, quarters phase, and resources are very important as far as allowing um, sides to be able to do things. <laughs> so uh, you want to have control of areas as well as your uh, support opposition. However, it's you know if someone's military, you know, playing the military game, particularly Britain, which can be a dominating military, and they're just putting troops around to control areas. But if they're not getting support there and the Patriots are getting their, you know, support for their sides, which is called opposition, they may just get an automatic win. An automatic win happens if during the winner's quarter phase, um, one of the supporter opposition is 10 greater than the other. So you have to try and keep that balanced. Otherwise, you can just pretty much automatically lose the game at some point. Um, so that's, that's where the power is going to be playing from. Um, all right. I, I think that's, uh, well, also to start, the French don't actually start being involved in the game until they can get this French preparation marker up above 15. And you see it's here on 16. That comes through a number of ways. One is if, uh, all the, you know, if British suffer casualties, uh, this will start to go up. Also, there's things the French can do to raise that um, through their individual actions. They can't. The French can't win the game until they actually get that prep marker up here, and in which case they can join the war with the um, Treaty of Alliance. And we talked about these. These are the Brilliant Strokes cards. Every side starts with one. The French have two. One being the Brilliant Strokes cards. And this means you can kind of trump in and kind of take a double turn. Um, and, but you only get one per, you know, you only get your one card per game. So uh, you need to kind of be, you know, careful about how you play them. Um, anyway, I've got everything set up. I'm going to do, I think, a, quick, a brief look at the rules here just before I get started. Um, and then I will, we'll see how it goes. We'll go from there. All right.